gravity doesn't lie. And right now, gravity is pulling Mount Etna apart. One minute ago, marine geodesy specialists confirmed that Mount Etna's underwater monitoring network has recorded the fastest sustained volcanic displacement in Mediterranean geological history. Not explosive eruption displacement, gravitational failure displacement. 3.7 centimeters per month of southeastern flank movements toward the abyssal plain. The numbers represent a fundamental change in how Mount Etna behaves. For millennia, the, vol vol the volcano's mass has been held in gravitational equilibrium. Magma pressure balanced against bedrock strength. That equilibrium is collapsing. Underwater acoustic transponders are recording what scientists call slow slip events, which are earthquake magnitude stress releases occurring over weeks instead of seconds. The accumulated energy is identical to multiple magnitude 6 plus earthquakes firing simultaneously. But there is no seismic signature, no warning tremors, no evacuation triggers. Just 35 billion tons of volcanic mountain are slowly crossing the point of no return, while coastal populations remain completely unaware that the seafloor beneath them is actively redistributing toward gravitational collapse. What happens when a slow earthquake suddenly accelerates to normal earthquake speed? How do you evacuate 20 million people from a tectonic rupture that traditional monitoring cannot detect? And why are three governments simultaneously installing submarine landslide detection systems that were classified until last month? For over 2,700 years, Mount Etna has loomed over the Mediterranean as Europe's largest and most active volcano. The ancient Greeks chronicled its fiery outbursts, calling it Etna, the mountain that burns. Etna's earliest recorded eruption dates back to 1500 BCE, and since then, the volcano has shaped the landscape and the lives of those who call Sicily home. 1669 brought Etna's most destructive eruption in nearly two millennia. For 122 days, the mountain spewed fire and ash, obliterating 10 villages and sending lava all the way to the city walls of Catania. Eyewitnesses described scenes of apocalyptic devastation. One observer wrote that the lava ran down the mountain like a river destroying and burning everything in its path. Another said the air filled with smoke and ash, blocking out the sun and turning day into night. But despite its violent history, Etna has settled into a relatively predictable pattern over the past few centuries. Since 1600, the volcano has experienced more than 60 flank eruptions, with nearly half occurring since 1900. These eruptions typically follow a familiar script. Magma intrusion leads to ground deformation, which triggers harmonic tremors, culminating in an explosive release. Etna's summit eruptions, while spectacular, rarely pose a direct threat to nearby populations. Towering lava fountains and billowing ash plumes make for breathtaking photographs, but the real danger lies further down the mountain's slopes. Etna's flank eruptions, though less frequent, have the potential to unleash widespread destruction. In 1928, a flank eruption on Etna's northeastern slope unleashed a river of lava that destroyed the village of Mascali, forcing the evacuation of nearly 6,000 residents. In 1981, another flank eruption sent lava flowing toward the town of Randazzo, threatening to cut off a critical highway and forcing authorities to use explosives to divert the flow. But even these destructive flank eruptions usually provide ample warning signs. GPS stations detect ground inflation weeks in advance as magma pushes its way toward the surface. Gas emissions spike, signaling the increased pressure building within the volcano. And in the hours before an eruption, seismic swarms rattle the region as the mountain quite literally shakes itself apart. For centuries, this pattern of activity has defined Mount Etna's behavior. Volcanologists have come to understand the mountain's moods, reading the signs and signals that precede each eruption. 
But in 2016, a revolutionary discovery shattered this long-standing paradigm. For the first time, sci scientists attempted to monitor Etna's underwater flank in real time, deploying a network of five acoustic transponders that pinged the seafloor every 90 minutes. The goal was to detect early signs of collapse before catastrophic failure could occur. The initial assumption was that any major event would be preceded by gradual, measurable movement, a slow, steady slippage that would give authorities time to evacuate coastal communities. They were wrong. In May 2017, Etna's underwater sensors recorded a shocking anomaly. The volcano's southeastern flank slipped a staggering four centimeters in just eight days. To put that in perspective, the normal rate of continental drift is about 2.5 centimeters per year. Etna moved 1,600% faster than the continents themselves, and it did so without any of the usual precursors. There was no spike in gas emissions and no swarm of warning tremors. The ground had not swelled with magma. In fact, there were no signs of any magmatic activity at all. Instead, the mountain was quite literally falling apart under its own weight, a gravitational collapse in progress. Dr. Morelia Urlaub, a marine geophysicist at the Guillaumar Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research in Kiel, Germany, could not believe the data at first. She recounted that 4.9 centimeters in 96 hours was the largest recorded slow slip event at an active volcano, and it happened without any of the traditional warning signs. Slow slip events, also known as silent earthquakes or slow earthquakes, are a relatively new concept in seismology. Unlike traditional earthquakes, which release energy in violent bursts lasting seconds or minutes, slow slip events unfold over days, weeks, or even months. The stress accumulates silently, deep within the Earth's crust, until it reaches a critical threshold. Then instead of rupturing suddenly, it begins transferring load to the surrounding rock in a gradual, almost imperceptible fashion. In Etna's case, the data from the underwater transponders painted a chilling picture. The southeastern flank, a staggering mass of 35 billion tons of rock, was slowly but inexorably sliding toward the Ionian Sea. As it moved, it accumulated stress at an alarming rate. Dr. Erlaub explained that the total energy released during this slow slip event was equivalent to a magnitude 6.8 earthquake. Because it happened so slowly, over the course of weeks rather than seconds, it completely evaded detection by the volcano's traditional monitoring network. In other words, Mount Etna was experiencing a massive seismic event, but one that was happening in ultra slow motion. It was as if the mountain was holding its breath, slowly building up pressure until it reached a breaking point. Dr. Hydran Kopp, a marine geodesy specialist at Geomar, Put it bluntly, the entire southeastern flank is in motion due to gravity, not magma. It is a tectonic rupture in slow motion, and it is approaching a critical stage. As Etna's slow slip event continues to unfold, a terrifying picture is emerging. The volcano's southeastern flank, a mass of rock larger than the entire island of Malta, is quite literally tearing itself apart. As it does so, it is inching closer and closer to a gravitational point of no return. Dr. Erlaub warned that based on our models, we believe the flank could reach a critical threshold within the next decade. Once that happens, the entire mass could detach and collapse into the Ionian Sea, triggering a catastrophic tsunami. The scale of such an event is difficult to fathom. Tsunami propagation models suggest that waves up to 50 meters high could radiate out from the collapsed site at speeds of 800 kilometers per hour. Within minutes, a wall of water would slam into the eastern coast of Sicily, inundating cities like Catania and Syracuse. Within an hour, it would reach the shores of Calabria and Apulia in southern Italy. But the devastation would not stop there the tsunami would continue to race across the Mediterranean, reaching the coasts of Greece, Libya, and Egypt within four hours. 
In its path lie some of the most densely populated regions on Earth, home to over 20 million people. Dr. Kopp said a tsunami of this magnitude would be unlike anything we have seen in recorded history. Coastal communities would have little to no warning and the damage to infrastructure would be catastrophic. He said we are talking about the complete destruction of ports, power plants and transportation networks. Perhaps most chilling of all is the fact that Etna's slow slip event seems to be part of a much larger pattern of tectonic instability. In recent years, scientists have detected similar slow earthquakes at volcanic systems around the world, from Japan's Mount Fuji to Chile's Villarica. Dr. Erlaub explained that these slow slip events may be transferring stress across vast distances potentially triggering eruptions and seismic activity thousands of kilometers away. Etna is not an isolated system. It is connected to a global network of tectonic instability that we are only just beginning to understand. As the scientific community grapples with this terrifying new reality, an unsettling question emerges. Why has the public not been warned? And why are the people most at risk still completely in the dark? if Etna's slow slip has been unfolding for over two years. The answer, it seems, lies in a combination of bureaucratic inertia, scientific uncertainty, and political expediency. In Italy, the government agency responsible for monitoring volcanic activity, the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, has been slow to acknowledge the scale of the threat. Dr. Carlo Doglioni, president of the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, said that there is no question that Etna's flank is moving, but that the exact mechanisms and timescales involved are still being debated. He said they do not want to create unnecessary panic or disrupt the region's vital tourism industry without a clear and present danger. But some experts argue that this wait and see approach is fundamentally misguided. Dr. Erlaub warns that we are dealing with a completely new type of geological hazard, one that our existing monitoring systems are ill-equipped to detect. By the time we have enough data to say definitively that a collapse is imminent, it may already be too late. Meanwhile, troubling signs of official secrecy and suppression continue to emerge. Slow slip data from Etna remains classified, withheld not only from the public, but from the wider scientific community. In recent months, Mediterranean governments have quietly installed a network of deep water pressure sensors and submarine landslide detectors, all without any public explanation. Dr. Kopp says that the deployment of this infrastructure without any transparency raises serious questions. What do these governments know that they are not telling us? Why are they investing in submarine disaster preparedness while leaving their own populations in the dark? The implications of an Etna tsunami are almost too vast to contemplate. Beyond the immediate devastation and loss of life, such an event could destabilize the entire Mediterranean basin, both geologically and geopolitically. The economic damage alone would be staggering with vital shipping lanes, tourism hubs, and energy infrastructure all in the potential impact zone. Perhaps most chilling of all is the realization that we are almost certainly not alone in this precarious geological balance. Etna's slow earthquake is a stark reminder that the ground beneath our feet is far more dynamic and unpredictable than we ever imagined. How many other volcanoes around the world are hiding similar secrets beneath the waves? How many other tectonic time bombs are ticking away their dangers hidden from view by the very forces that drive our planet's ceaseless cycles of creation and destruction. As the mountain's silent scream builds toward a devastating crescendo, we are left with a harrowing question. What will it take for us to listen before the sea itself comes crashing down upon us? This is Earth Attacks, where we reveal the geological processes that operate beyond traditional scientific detection. Subscribe to understand the planetary systems that governments monitor but don't explain, because the most dangerous tectonic threats are the ones that make no sound. 
And right now, Mount Etna's silence is becoming mathematically impossible to maintain. 